That's a touchdown for Miami, Tua Tungavailoa find Devona Smith in a 90 yards passing. Oh my goodness. He break the NFL record. It would be great if that was chanted by commentators during the 2021 season. Miami Dolphins owns the third pick in 2021 NFL draft, so what should Dolphins do to support Tua Tungavailoa in his second season? Which names are good enough to play with Tua and bring glory to the Miami Dolphins? In this video I will analyze how Miami Dolphins will support Tua Tungavailoa in 2021. And in the remainder of the video, I will nominate five support positions for Tua, which are all names from Alabama, they are Tua's former teammates. After a mixed rookie season with the Dolphins in 2020, should Miami consider supporting Tua Tungavailoa? He needed, I think, a year to figure it out just medically, get his body back to where it needs to be. He played and won games. I think the arm strength will show next year when he's now he's now more time removed from that significant hip injury. The Dolphins missed out on a playoff appearance after a 10-6 season, capped by Sunday's 56-26 loss at the Buffalo Bills. Tungavailoa struggled mightily, completing 35 of 58 passes 60.3% for 361 yards but just one touchdown to an NFL single-game career high three interceptions. Miami has options with the number three overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, but quarterback does not necessarily need to be a focus. Instead, I'm talking out a former Alabama teammate and top target as a potential option. I think that third pick can go to Devona Smith, they need a playmaking receiver, big-time receiver. The Crimson Tide senior wide receiver, who was a go-to guy for Tungavailoa from 2017 to 19. He was that type of player at Alabama with Tua. You remember going early in his career against Georgia. So I think that Devona Smith. They could need a running back, obviously, help in different pieces at various positions. They have the draft forces to surround Tua, improve this football team. Move forward with Tua, get the receiver and I think next year or the year after you will see a different Tua than we saw this season coming off, so quickly, less than a year removed from the injury when he the field for Miami this year. In 10 games, 9 starts, Tungavailoa went 6-3, completing 186 of 290 passes 64.1% for 1,814 yards and 11 touchdowns to 5 interceptions while adding 3 rushing scores. Despite a rough end to the season, ESPN NFL insider Dan Graziano shared what he gathered on Tungavailoa from his conversations with people about Miami's draft situation. I think the Miami Dolphins believe that Tua Tungavailoa always needed time to develop, Graziano said on Get Up. And I think you look at it, he came into the offseason coming off an injury. It was an offseason where they couldn't really gather for OTAs, minicamp, even training camp in a traditional sense. So I would be very surprised, based on everything I've heard from the Miami Dolphins this year, if they were thinking about replacing Tua Tungavailoa after nine starts. Obviously, it's a situation where he's always going to get compared where he's always going to get compared to the other guys he was drafted with, Los Angeles Chargers rookie quarterback and 2020 NFL draft number 6 overall pick, Justin Herbert has this great year, and so, people are going to look and say, well, why couldn't Tua be that? Maybe he's not the right guy. But I think that the Miami Dolphins believe that Tua is a guy that can be their franchise quarterback, and a number one receiver for Tua than on finding his potential replacement in that process. This would be a match made in heaven in 2021 season. It is clear to everyone that watched Miami play this season that they are in desperate need of playmakers at the receiver position. Devontae Parker and Mike Jasicki are both decent receiving threats, but they need some help. Preston Williams can't stay healthy and Jakeem Grant can't be counted on in a larger role on offense. Miami needs to get a quality wideout in the draft. Devona Smith is one of the two possible answers to that issue. At 6 feet 1 inch and 175 pounds, Smith may seem a little small for his body, but don't let that deceive you. He is a quality route runner and can make plays by both catching the ball in the open field and making somebody miss and going up and getting the ball at its peak. Most importantly, he has good hands, which seems to have been something of a struggle for the 2020 receiving corp. Devona Smith should be a dream come true for Dolphins fans if he falls to them in the middle of the first round and would be a welcome sight and would be a welcome sight for Tua Tungavailoa. Jalen Waddell. Answer number two to the receiver question. The argument could be made that Miami should take Waddle over Smith if they have their choice of the two. 
Waddle runs a little heavier than Waddle, 182 pounds, but is shorter, 5 feet 10 inches. The biggest difference between the two, however, is speed. Smith is not slow by any means, but Waddle has game-breaking speed that is just what this Dolphins offense needs. With Parker and Jasicki, the Dolphins have two guys who are big athletic threats, but they don't have a true speedster that can take a ball from the middle and turn it into a touchdown on speed alone. Waddle could be a perfect complement to Parker's skill set and would be much more reliable than Jakeem Grant could ever be. Najee Harris. Najee Harris should be another dream come true for Dolphins fans. That comment is not a slight to Miles Gaskin, who turned out to be a gem for the Dolphins in 2020. Yet, Harris's bulkier frame and be an incredible complement for Gaskin's shiftiness. Harris is an athletic freak who can run between the tackles, bounce plays outside, and take catches out of the backfield with ease. Oh, and he can also hurdle defenders like it's easy. Harris would be a perfect running back to put behind Tagovailoa and help take the pressure off the young quarterback. Alex Leatherwood. Leatherwood would be an interesting pick for the Dolphins, most mock drafts have him going late in the first round so it might be a bit of a reach for Miami to take him with either of their first round picks, assuming they keep their picks. If Miami does take Leatherwood, they would get a solid tackle prospect who could round out a young and developing offensive line. Leatherwood has also shown that he could play guard, which is the versatility that Brian Flores loves in his players. This would definitely be a luxury pick, but the Dolphins may have the assets to pull it off. Dylan Moses. I wanted to put Patrick Sertain too on this list for both the elite play of the talented corner and the nostalgic feeling it will create in so, create in so many Dolphins fans. But, I decided to go a different route instead. One of Miami's weaknesses on defense was at linebacker and Moses could immediately help improve this unit. He has made some mistakes on defense, but he has elite speed at the position that can help him overcome any challenges he creates for himself. He is a strong, athletic prospect that has the potential to grow under Brian Flores' leadership. Moses might be on the board in the second round and, if Miami has addressed its offensive woes adequately, they could like to bring in Moses and round out a solid linebacking position for this talented defense. Last things as usual, I spend 5 hours to give my opinion in the video, but you can do it in just 5 seconds. Let me know your thoughts by commenting below. I always appreciate your opinion, even when you say I'm bad. Talk it 10 times and in 100 different videos. We all deserve our own voice.